Good afternoon, it's three o'clock on a Monday. Welcome to Joe and Mike's award-winning virtual tours. And uh, we said we're going to take in a little mystery tour. So we're out of Edinburgh. Restrictions are lifting a bit here in Scotland, so we can travel a little bit further than before. Um, and we've brought it to a little place we're going to talk about in a minute. So we're here out of Edinburgh. We're in the Falkirk area. Now Falkirk is right in the middle of Scotland. It's got a great history pre-Roman, -Pre Roman, and also right up through the, to the Bonnie Prince Charlie connections. Um, we've got the connections with William Wallace here, and we've got very modern connections as well. It's very much a, a modern town here in Falkirk. And we're going to be doing another webinar on Falkirk with some of the attractions. Some of you may be familiar with the Kelpies. If you haven't seen the Kelpies, I would advise you to have a little Google on the Kelpies. We're also going to be covering the Falkirk Wheel, they're all unique, and this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring you things that are unique to Scotland. The Falkirk Wheel is the only revolving boat lift. Kelpies are unique in terms of the art, and also we're here at a very special place. It's very special for me because it's very close to where I grew up. And this is Mike's first time here as well. So Mike was like a big kid when we arrived here. And uh, we're going to talk about Dunmore House. The Dunmore House is also known as the Dunmore Pineapple. And you're going to see why it's called the Pineapple. And as I mentioned, I grew up in this area and we used to come here regularly when we were kids. We'd jump on our bikes and we'd cycle out here. And we used to roll our Easter eggs. We used to paint our eggs and roll them down the hill. Um, and also the place was a ruin when, we were, when I was younger and we used to build fires in the portico there if it was raining or cold, we'd just sit and have a fire in here. So this is a Dunmore pineapple. So let's talk a little bit more about why it's here and what's it about. Well, it was actually built in 1761 and it was built by the Earl of Dunmore. The Dunmores were of the Murray family. So there was John Murray. And he was quite a famous guy, and his father was very famous too. They're very wealthy. And he made his money um, in, this, in the 1760s in the North America and also in the colonies and the sugar plantations over in the Caribbean as well. So very, very wealthy. It's said that he built this house um, as a summer house because the main house is only about half a mile further north. Itself is in ruins. So this was built in 1761. Now, why the pineapple? Well, pineapples have got a, a place in Scottish history, and I'm sure it's the same in many countries. The pineapple was also seen as a status symbol, a symbol of wealth, a symbol of status. And you, in Edinburgh, you'll see a lot of the um, railings that you have outside the houses in the new town have pineapples on them. And it was said that um, if you were in the, in the West Indies and you were coming back from the West Indies, you'd bring pineapples and you'd leave a, put a pineapple in your window. Now Mike and I were discussing about pineapples as well and Mike was saying that people used to rent a pineapple. So you'd put it into, as a display on your table to show you how wealthy you were. But you would take you wouldn't eat it, you would just show it off. It's very much of a snob sort of thing. But they actually grew pineapples here as well. Now a little bit more about the Murrays. John Murray and his father fought in the Battle of Culloden, but they fought on the side of Bonnie Prince Charlie. His father was captured and taken down and put in prison in the Tower of London. So that was in 1746. And John was young, he was a young boy at the time, but certainly fought with the, or had sympathies with the Stuarts. However, as with most families, they would hedge their bets. So you would have some of your family fighting for Bonnie Prince Charlie, and the other side of your family would be fighting for the Hanoverians. So that whichever side won, you were not going to get your lands forfeited because you would have, some, you would have relatives fighting on both sides. And that's exactly what they did. And it was very common for sons to split and join opposite armies. Now he, John, then worked for the British government and he became a governor in Virginia, in the United States. And John was the last governor of Virginia. So he was there 
coming up to the American Revolution. And it said he actually burnt, he was responsible for the burning of Norfolk, Virginia, um, and he escaped up to New York and then came back here. Now, we don't know whether they built this summer house before he went to the States or after he went to the States. The architect himself is uh, William Chambers, and um, we've talked about Chambers before. Chambers built Dundas House in Edinburgh, which is the headquarters of the Royal Bank of Scotland, the old headquarters. Um, so Chambers was very well known, and it's a detail that we can hopefully you can pick out here, not only of the pineapple itself, but you can see the, the family motto up here. It's got Fidelis in Adversus, so it's faith in adversity. And it's got the date here, 1761. And I think Mike can pick that up there. Yeah, I think we can just see that, yeah. This is the first time I've been here, and I just um, overcome. I just uh, think it's fabulous. It's just like, I've seen it in photographs and so on, but it's nothing like coming with a local Blue Badge guide as Joe is, and just, uh, I, I'm at the other end of this. I'm uh, <laughs> your customer. <laughs> so, I am just loving seeing this. So I'm Mike's the, on tour. Yeah, I, I, yeah, when I bring yeah. people here, I, I will be honest with you, Mike. Um, I very, I don't tell people when I'm taking them. Normally, if I'm doing a driver guiding, they're on the way up to Stirling or Bannockburn, and I will pull off the motorway, and people are going like, where are we going, where are we going? And I don't tell them that we're coming here. I bring them into the wonderful gardens, and they're still chatting away, talking to you, and then you turn them around and you see this building here, and it is a gem of a building here. Now, it actually fell into ruin, and uh, it was the whole lot was up for auction, and it was bought by the Countess of Perth, in the 1960s, and as I mentioned, it was a ruin. We used to play in here. We used to climb up it. We were like rodents running all over the place with it. And as I mentioned, we would build fires. But the Countess of Perth gifted the building to the National Trust for Scotland. So it's now maintained by the National Trust, and it is for hire. You can rent this out as a holiday cottage and it's how you can hire it through Landmark Trust. So Landmark Trust look after it on behalf of the National Trust of Scotland. Now I mentioned before that they actually grew pineapples here. It was very well known for, this great, for the greenhouses, the glass houses. And when I was growing up, we used to go inside the glass houses as well. There's nothing left of the glass houses. But obviously growing pineapples in Scotland is not an easy task. So you had to have some skill in doing this. So this had to ha the greenhouses all along these walls. And they would grow peaches in here as well. So all the exotic fruits. So all along the walls here, you, you can still see bits where the greenhouses were attached, but there's nothing left of the glass house itself. They would use horse manure to begin with, because horse manure, when it ferments, gives off nice heat. And that would give you the right conditions, the humidity and the heat and the warmth to grow the pineapple. Then they actually used steam to keep the conditions correct for the growing of the pineapple itself. I don't forget any questions, sir. Yeah, yeah, we have somebody who uh, missed the start and uh, just wanted you to say again where we are at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a little place, uh, we're at the Pineapple, the Dunmore House, and the Pineapple is near the town of Falkirk. Falkirk would be the biggest town possibly to, on the map. If you want to look at your maps, the town of Falkirk. It's actually right next to a little village called Airth, A-I-R-T-H. And uh, Airth itself is quite, it's got a nice little castle that you can visit while you're here. It's off the beaten track but it's well, well worth it just to come and have a look at this. So when you come into Scotland, and if you're not with Mike and I, if you're with another guide, ask them to take you to the Pineapple, or, the, or Dunmore House, the Dunmore Pineapple. Soaked in history. Now we mentioned a little bit about Falkirk as well. Falkirk is an, one of the ancient towns and it's got great connections. I'm sure you've all seen the film Braveheart, remember? Probably the worst Scottish accent in the world. <laughs> Um, but William Wallace. So it was the Battle of Falkirk during the Wars of Independence that William Wallace was captured. And he was taken down 
And we all know the story of William Wallace. He was hung, drawn and quartered and parts of his body was put all over Scotland as a message to the Scots not to get too uppity. However, that didn't last very long because then Robert the Bruce came along and the battles began again in the Second Wars of Independence. Another thing that people uh, misunderstand about Scotland is a lot of people think, oh, the, we weren't occupied by the Romans. This is, this is a part of myth, mythology. Scotland was occupied by the Romans. In fact, it was from here, in this area here, that the Romans built their second wall across the country, the Antonine Wall. And the Antonine Wall went from the west coast, from the River Clyde, basically, right over to the east coast here, the Firth of Forth. And there were forts all along this wall. There's about 15 or 16 forts and about 30 fortlets, little forts as well. And you can actually walk part of the Antonine's Wall. And the Antonine's Wall is different from Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall was the earlier wall. Antonine's Wall was made of turf, so very, very little remains of it. But we do have the mile markers. When the legions were building it, they would make these mile markers and they would put some graffiti on it and they're always trying to outbid it or outcompete with each other. And we have those mile markers in the museums in Glasgow. We also have a great Roman history in terms of treasure. The Romans left Scotland. They thought they were going to come back. So what did they do? They hid the treasure. And so treasure troves are still being found to this day and you can see the beautiful silver in the National Museum of Scotland. And it was the Romans who gave Scotland the name of Caledonia. You may have come across that name. So they called, the Romans called the people of the north the Caledons and this became Caledonia. There's a great song about Caledonia. It's almost like an unofficial national anthem which I'm sure if you Google it for Caledonia it's a quite a nice romantic song. So here we are in Falkirk. There are so many things we're going to show you here um, later on in our webinars. Hope you can join us. We'll take you, we'll give you the story of the Kelpies and we'll give you the story of the Falkirk Wheel. Now the parkland here is worth coming as well here. The air is so pure and so clean that we've got lichen hanging from the trees and it's like Spanish moss, it's thick, it's beautiful. And also there's a nature, it's, we're in the middle of a nature reserve here as well and there's a species of newts that you can only find here and they're unprotected species. It's also a little triple SI, a site of scientific interest. It's very peaceful today up here and uh, I think we've had a few questions or comments about the weather it was blue skies and it was very sunny early on, but uh, here we go again. <laughs> it's changed once more, but we know that. We are accustomed yeah, to that. We're in Scotland. And, uh, Four seasons in one day. It's not as cold as it's been, so I think we're getting there, aren't we? Oh, springs are on. You can see the daffodils yeah. here. You can hear the birds um, getting a, little, a lot louder. Um, certainly spring is certainly on its way here. Um, and I don't know if you can pick up the sounds if you go quiet. You might actually pick up the birds. I can hear some shooting going on as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a short one today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've loved the pineapple. We love it. We think it's great. And if you want to come on vacation here, you can hire this as your special little treat. And maybe you're going to treat somebody in your family. You want to share something. You want to bring them somewhere special in Scotland. Oh, I'm going to tell you a, a little story I forgot to mention here. <clears throat> I was in the Florida Keys about 10 years ago. And uh, I met up with this artist called David Schofield. He's an American artist and he's based in the Florida Keys. He's got lots of great art in the Metropolitan um, Museum in New York City. He'll basically come up to me and say, oh, you're Scottish, aren't you? And I was like, oh, yeah, yes, I am. <laughs> I think I'm going to get in trouble. And he came up here and he visited the pineapple. And his specialty is doing paintings or drawings with pen and ink. And the detail is just amazing that he did with this on this thing. So we went back to the studio and he showed me this picture of the pineapple. And of course, having such close connections with it growing up here, I had to buy it. So I've got um, uh, bought an original piece of art from an artist called David Schofield. And certainly, I mean, Google him as well. David Schofield, American artist, based in Florida Keys. And I've got one of his pen and ink drawings here. So another little connection 
between Scotland and the United States. So yeah, I, I just like to say when I was in the States, uh, and maybe some of our US uh, audience will confirm this, uh, the pineapple used to appear in various places, and railings and doors and interiors as well. And I was told then that it was a, a symbol of welcome, the mm. pineapple. Uh, so maybe you would like to confirm that some of our uh, US viewers, but uh, yeah, quite a significant, uh, I need to go and buy a pineapple now, I think. <laughs> You can never go wrong with the pineapple. It still, it still feels exotic to me. Pineapples are exotic, you know. Yeah. Uh.